Hi, I'm Callum Byrne. And I'm Tom Haywood. And you're watching Solent Sports News. Here's your sports news at quarter past four. The International Olympic Committee has defended its decision to send home GB athlete Adam Pengilly from the Winter Games after an incident with a security officer. Details haven't been made public, but it's reported that written in a letter, Pengili apologised for not stopping after being asked for his accreditation at a hotel in Pyeongchang and for running away from the officer. Director of Communications Mark Adams released a statement following the incident. I haven't seen the, the, uh, the video footage. I know that we pretty much quickly summoned him uh, to see the ethics and compliance officer where the, the incident was discussed. Adam Pengeli admitted uh, that he'd made uh, some errors and apologized and has left, uh, I think he has actually left the country now. Jamaica's women's bobsleigh team have had a shaky start to their first Winter Olympics after their coach, Sandra Karasis, left and threatened to take their sled with her. However, Jamaica's most popular beer brand, Red Stripe, have stepped in and is preparing another sled worth around £5,000 for the competition. Red Stripe tweeted, No bobsled, no problem. If you need a ride, put it on Red Stripe's tab. The team are due to start official training tomorrow before their heats on Tuesday and Wednesday. Earlier today, our reporter Amber Henning caught up with winter sports expert Matt Masson to discuss GB's Winter Olympics campaign in Pyeongchang so far. Tell us how GB are doing at the Winter Olympics. Well, GB actually won their first uh, medal of the Games yesterday when Don Parsons won a bronze in the men's skeleton, which was, was actually their first, GB's first medal in skeleton for the men since 1948, which doesn't really tell the whole story because it's only the seventh time it's competed in the event. Yeah, why was that? Because, like, understandably, if you see the, the, the sport, it's someone lying face first on a, on a tea tray shooting down a bobsled track and the IOC understandably said thought it was maybe a bit bit too dangerous and for whatever reason now they uh, they don't think it is they think it's safe and so it's GB's third bronze medal in and seven total events basically um how did Lizzie Arnold do so Lizzie Arnold who won who is defending champion because she won she won bronze in Sochi um she after the first heat she finished uh she set a track record was number one uh, but by the end of it, she was finished third, and um, and Laura D, another GB athlete, finished fourth. So, um, are there any other Brits we should look out for today? So there are three Brits in the cross country skiing. Um, GB curling, they they have, uh, they've got another. They continue their round robin against uh, Sweden. And tonight, which is technically tomorrow in Korea, um, uh, the slope style skiing begins for the women. And um, yeah, Izzy Atkin and Katie Summerhays are tipped for some success there. So. Um, and will there be any medal hawks for Great Britain this weekend? Well, there's one, which I am the event we've all been waiting for, <laughs> the men's slope style, where GB actually have a genuine hope of, of medal. Um, James Woodsy Woods, he, he could win. I mean, his best event is actually Big Air, which is only competed in, in snowboard in the Olympics. But I think his, because because of where he learned to ski up on the dry slope, he's really, really good on rails, which should, which the judges love, and so it should, he should fare quite well in, um, in slope style. But he, I, my tip for that, that event is uh, Henrik Harlow. I think he's going to win. So, so um, could you just explain more about the event, Big Air? So, well, so Big Air, the Big Air is not in the, the skiing is not in the Olympics. It's just uh, where, you, where they go down on a massive jump and just do. Like normally the best best one of two tricks. Um, slope style is um, an event where skiers um, go down a slope. Skiers or snowboarders go down a slope, and um, there's a rail section at the top where they've got to go and jump on rails and do various twists and slides, and then three jumps at the end where they've got to do their best jump trick. And Woodsy is one of the best skiers in the world at rails, so that's why he's. A genuine male hope for GB. Okay, thank you for that. No Alex McLeish has agreed to a second spell in charge of the Scottish national side 11 years after leaving the post. The 59 year old will sign a deal until 2020, replacing his former Aberdeen and Scotland teammate Gordon Strachan, 
who left in October after his side failed to qualify for the World Cup. McLeish's first game in charge will be against Costa Rica next month. His side will take on Albania at Hampden Park in his first competitive game on the 10th of September. The former Aston Villa manager had this to say. Been selected for your country and as a player and now to be selected as head coach, it's, it's a great thrill for me again. Uh, you know, there, there was a few challenges that um, I ignored and when a job like this comes along, then it's, it's fantastic to know that you've actually secured it. West Brom and Southampton will put their Premier League struggles to one side when they meet in the fifth round of the FA Cup tomorrow. Both teams currently sit in the relegation zone. However, West Brom's season could be going from bad to worse. Reports in Spain claim that four of the Baggies' first team squad stole a taxi outside of McDonald's in Marbella during their warm weather training camp. This comes just days after its chairman, John Williams, and CEO, Martin Goodman, left the club. The Baggies are seven points from safety in the Premier League with just 11 games of the season remaining. Williams Formula One team launched their 2018 car in London last night. The car is to be piloted by 19-year-old Canadian Lance Stroll and R Russian rookie Sergei Sorokin, who replaces Brazilian Felipe Massa. The FW41 is the second 2018 car to be launched after Haas released images of their new Challenger on Wednesday. Aston Martin Red Bull Racing will be the next team to launch on Monday the 19th of February. And George Groves meets Chris Eubank Jr. in a World Boxing Super Series semi-final in Manchester. The winner claims the WBA title and the first spot in the finals. Groves enters the ring after winning a world title last year as the veteran fighter, with 30 fights to his name. However, Eubank Jr. is in the best stretch of his career and many believe that Groves left his best rounds in the ring with Carl Frock and Baden Jack. Eastleigh Football Club have had a roller coaster last two seasons. And after an upturn in form, they're once again looking to make a push for promotion to the Football League. But how are they getting on? Our reporters have been to the Silver Lake Stadium to find out. Eastleigh Football Club are the South Coast's strongest non-league side, currently sitting 12th in the National League table. The Spitfires are currently three years into a five-year plan to get themselves into the Football League, as General Manager Kenny Amor explains. I think that, that when Stuart first came in, there was like a, a five-year plan that we that we could progress as high up the you know the, the football league as we possibly could, and yeah, ultimately the goal for us is to get into the football league and then take take each league as it comes. The club are aiming to continue to attract good crowds to the Silver Lake Stadium and have frozen ticket prices for next season in order to do so. Uh, it, it's excellent for us. It makes our job really easy to have the ability to promote the season ticket to a wider audience and sell at the same great price. Uh, I think that there's only one or two clubs in the league that can rival us for price and it's, uh, it really is making football affordable. Many football fans don't pay attention to the local clubs that are often just on their doorstep. But good value for money can make it more appealing than some think. I think that for, for some people non-league football still has a bit of a stigma uh, and it's until you come and see it for yourself, it, you, from, from the outside looking in, it's not something you want to go and watch. So by keeping it affordable, keeping it this cheap, but offering the facilities that we do at the club, I think that's really important. Attendances seem to directly correlate with league form, but an average National League match now sees around 2,000 spectators. The Spitfires are slowly pushing up the table, and there are hopes that the recent upturn in form will cause an influx in ticket sales. I think that uh, at the start of the season we'd set our benchmark a little higher than what we've actually achieved, but I think with the indifferent season we've had to sort of still be around 2,100 as an average gate, I think we're delighted with that. And I think if we'd have been um, con continually sort of in the top echelons of the league, we, we would have been closer to two and a half, but possibly even three. So, you know, we, we, the season's not done with yet, so let's hope that we can continue on our good, good reign of form and hopefully uh, by the end of the season be closer to that two and a half mark. Eastleigh are a club with strong ambitions on and off the pitch. They've just extended the West Stand, adding an additional 550 seats to open up room for more members of the Spitfires family. Yeah, I think that uh, although we've got all the seats behind the goal, I think the people really, the, the best view of the pitch and where people want to be sat is on the halfway line. And with the existing West Stand being sold out to season ticket holders, it was really important for us to have more seats available and, and as well, more seats available for the hospitality customers that we're doing really well with these days. With the five year plan in place, it looks as though the Spitfires could be close to taking off. This has been Will Perry for Solent Sports News.
The Winter Olympics may be in full flow, but it's the Summer Games where young shot putter Serena Vincent will be hoping she can shine in the next few years. With her GCSEs just around the corner, will she manage to balance her studies with preparations for the European Championships? Jack Stevens finds out. Shot put isn't necessarily an activity you'd expect most people to grow up wanting to play, but when you have ability like Serena Vincent does, you're usually drawn to the sport. Training almost daily at a sports centre in Portsmouth, Serena spends hours on end just perfecting her throw. It may appear to be a monotonous task, but it isn't without reward. Earlier this year, Serena broke the all-time record for British under-17 women's indoor shot put. Uh, it feels really good, to be honest. Um, it's more, it's quite surreal at first when it first happens. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really exciting because I know that it's never been done in history before. So it just makes me feel really good and I'm, I'm proud of myself and it, it makes me more determined to ca continue, with, continue with it and just see where I can go. With training starting when it's light and ending in darkness, it's important that Serena surrounds herself with a team as committed as she is to ensure she reaches her high potential. But when your main coach is your father, can it be a little bit tricky to find the balance between parenting and training? During a coaching session, she, she has to pay attention to the coach. Um, she won't like everything she hears. That's that's natural. Um, but yeah, we, but that's how we work. You know, when we're at a competition, I'm you know I'm a coach while she's throwing, and then when she's not throwing, I'm back to dad, and, and that's that's the way it is. Whilst her father may think it works well, how does Serena feel the team is working? So there's, yeah, there's lots of benefits to it because obviously I get on really well with him anyway, and there's things that he can say to me that like a coach can't say, but. Yeah, it's nice because I can always, he's always there at every competition um, and I'm never like nervous to speak to him or anything. So it's good just to be able to like trust in him and like he, can, he knows exactly how I'm feeling on that day. And yeah, it's just, it works really well to be honest. Serena is a confident character and who wouldn't be after breaking 27 records in the last year alone? But how does her father make sure she keeps her feet on the ground? Yeah, we beat her up a lot, you know. <laughs> uh, no, I think uh, ultimately, um, no. She she understands she understands that uh, her her schooling is really important. She understands that you nothing is a given in this life. You have to work really hard at it. No woman has ever won a medal for Great Britain at the Olympics. But if Serena carries on at her current trajectory, she could break yet another record at Tokyo 2020. Jack Stevens, Solent Sports News. Hopefully a future star for Team GB. Fingers crossed. We wish her the very best. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at Solent Sports News. I've been Callum Byrne. And I've been Tom Haywood. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.